Can I just um, get a show of hands first? Has anybody heard of Meteor Kitchen? Yes, I've actually. There's awareness, and ha who's used it? Okay, a few. All right, that's good. Um, all right, so I'm talk about Meteor Kitchen. Peter Kapionic, I think. Um, Serbian guy, I've been talking to him recently, it started out, I, I discovered it and then I asked, asked him questions and then I said, oh, I can fix some of your English on the site and he said, yeah, here's the, <laughs> here's the link, go and check it out. So I did that and got talking about various things and, you know, we've become friends recently and we've been doing um, um, Google chats, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, my daughter, he, he lives in Serbia and my daughter is is convinced that I'm joining ISIS or some terrorist organization. <laughs> it's like, you've got no idea. Because <laughs> I was asking him about his work and he said that, um, you know, there's been three three wars in Serbia in the last 20 years, so uh, the economy is pretty much shot. <laughs> so uh, it's quite difficult. He, he runs some accounting system. He's got 90 customers and last year 25 of them went broke. So things are a little difficult. And more cooking, that's me on Facebook. I go by a whole bunch of names, Mickle, Morkle, Mike, Mick, Mickey, whatever. Um, <clears throat> all right, this is me on a recumbent bike. Um, and this is a bit of a sidetrack, but it's actually relevant. <laughs> I, funnily enough, it is. I ride a road bike normally. I like to go on beach road. I race a little bit, not that I'm particularly good. Um, and a friend of mine told me about these, so I went and had a look talked to the guy who, who made them and sold them, and he said, come and race. We've got this thing down in Geelong at the, the um, circuit there. So I went and raced, and it's amazing how fast that thing is. And I took it out on Beach Road a couple of times, um, and I sat behind a pack for a while, and then I decided I wasn't going fast enough. So I went past them, and I was sitting on 50 kilometres an hour, and nobody passed me. Like Normally, people pass me all the time, but nobody passed me on Beach Road. And I was talking to them about it and saying, this is, feels like an unfair advantage. And they said, no, you're just thinking about it the wrong way. That's the way it should be. And the, the message is that Meteor feels like that. It feels like an unfair advantage that you've got this amazing tool that you can do full stack development from front to end. So that's sort of where that fits in. All right. Um, Meteor Kitchen, how does it work? Basically, there's a, a couple of ways of doing things. There's a GUI. Um, which isn't really that good. Uh, it's a good idea, and the funny thing is that the GUI is built in Meteor Kitchen itself, so it's almost like the, the Yak thing. It's yet another compiler, compiler. Um, so it's circular. Or you can work from an input file, which is either JSON or, or YAML. Um, the JSON is really difficult to edit. Like Once you get past a few lines, matching braces and JavaScript syntax is kind of ugly with the commas. Like if you've got a trailing comma after a brace and you don't need it, then it doesn't work. The YAML is a little bit easier, but not much. And I was talking to Peter about, um, you know, some other way of describing things, and we'll come to that in a little while. Um, it's got this system where there's a generator, and it takes this input file, but it also has a whole bunch of widgets. So he's prepared... Um, a bunch of widgets and libraries and blocks of code that he uses to build your application. So you can just specify those things um, and he pulls those in. And he's also given you the ability to put components of your own there. They can be markdown files, they can be JavaScript files, they can be HTML, um, which is kind of cool. So you can actually maintain an application, the whole thing, in, in this world. Like a lot of um, things like Yeoman, the um, app, application generators um, are pretty much a one-shot thing that you, you give it some, you, you tell it which framework you want to build and it builds it for you and then you're on your own. Whereas this one you can actually circulate and you can go full life cycle. <coughs> and he also calls it a prototyping tool as well as a, a generator. All right. Um, so this is the GUI. Um, you've got things like you can drill into your collections, you can create uh, a customer's collection and then fields within that collection. Um, it's got a public zone and a private zone and that keys keys in with the, uh, the login, the authentication plugins in Meteor. Um, standard sort of pages, login, register, forgot password and stuff. You can create your menus. You can create a private zone. The screen's not big enough for that. Um, you can do it in JSON. So you can edit in whatever editor. And in fact, this is an editor in 
just in the, the kitchen itself. Um, same sort of stuff, it's a bit more detailed in here, but all of those attributes, you basically got this, this field, it's all nested, you can do pages within pages, so you can actually have a whole hierarchical tree of pages if you want to. I mean, most web apps, you probably only want to go two or three levels deep at the, at the most anyway. But you can build deeper if you want. All right, that's what the YAML input looks like. Um, it's a bit easier. Um, and I think, it, I'm not an expert on YAML, I think it relies on the indentation. Um, anyone know? Mm -hmm. yeah, it does? Yeah, yeah okay. Um, but the same sort of key value pair and, and indentation for the nesting. All right. And then talking to him, one night he, he then went off and wrote a, a compiler, a parser overnight, stayed up all night and wrote this thing. Um, and basically, it's, his, his aim was to provide a description for, a, um, for an application. So if I copy all of that to the clipboard, and then I'll go off if I'm in the right place. No, it's all right. I'll... No, that's not the right place. Never mind. Admin. No, it's not right. Never mind. I will go to where I need to go. I will paste that in there. Let's put some other gumps as well. Oh, we've got two copies of it. <coughs> All right, that will probably do. <coughs> Save that, and then I'll run this human to machine on this file. And I'll output to um, human.json. And then basically it's built this um, JSON file with all the <laughs> stuff in it, which is cool. And then I can compile it using Meteor Kitchen. JSON and then I'll put it in a directory called test. Actually, I won't. I'll use an existing one just to make it quicker. Um, I'll put it in a directory called human, and it's basically just because um, it's going to download a whole bunch of packages and stuff. And then we'll say meteor. Taking our building. So here we go. We've now got a little app. We've got a customers there. We can add a new person. Like Good. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Have we got that recorded? Because I've got to send Peter the uh, the tape of this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, you can build it. You can prototype an app. I mean, I imagine you can sit with a customer and go, "Okay, we'll just describe this in a few lines of English. Press a button. Away you go." So it's kind of exciting. Um, Um, yeah, look, <laughs> and it doesn't give you any warnings if it's wrong. That's stage two. Um, yeah, it needs a full stop at the end of every line, otherwise it just creates one long line. 
<coughs> All right. Um, anyway, so it generates files in a, a structure that's reasonably well organized. Um, these are sort of snippets of it. There's quite a lot there. Um, different files it creates, a HTML, it creates a JS and sometimes a controller. Um, often the JS files are just empty, they're just little stubs. So there's places for you to put your code all the way along. Um, and it has this, you know, it's got what's common to both, what lives in the server, server and client, and then the new stuff is there with the associated JavaScript. Um, this is a site that he's got a whole bunch of demos on his website, and I encourage you to, to look at them. I'll show you this one for real. <laughs> so this is a, a single page website um, and basically this is, you know, see it's familiar and then, so it, it's actually quite simple to lay out a structure and then all of the frameworky stuff, so you just have your content in one place in like little markup file, markdown files or HTML files and images, you put those in a directory so that's all your own stuff and then you have this JSON file which glues it all together and you basically just press generate and off it goes. You can have uh, you know, markdown stuff like that with a code box, um, pictures, comments, you can have a feedback form as well. So all that's kind of cool. You can put your copyright notice on it. So, and it builds all the menus, all that for you. Um, <coughs> And then if we go to the next one, uh, um, one of the things, maybe I'll show you the other app. This one is a very, this is, uh, he's got a, a demo of this um, and I need to work with him on fixing it because um, one of the packages, if we just look at, this guy's written a bunch of packages. These are the ones that he's built. And this one here, this user roles, has what is it? 50, is that 5,400 people have used it, but it's got no documentation on it at all. So he hasn't documented it. And it's basically people who've used his, his kitchen and have therefore pulled it in. Um, the demo that he has written it has user roles in the in the um, the code there, but you you're logged in by default when you sign into it. You don't have access to this admin page, so you basically got to go and fiddle your Mongo setting to get yourself access, and then you can you've then got um, the ability to add a new user. So you give yourself admin oh, it already exists. Oh, that's because it's using the same email. All right, cancel that. Um, so yeah, this is a powerful feature and it's something that could probably be used in the Meteor community, but people are probably not aware of it because there's no documentation. And then if we go on to the next one, um, <coughs> there's some other stuff to look at. I'd encourage you to go and, and play with things. Um, in fact, I'll show you the IDE. That's probably a good it's quite simplistic. Um, so the idea is that you've, you've got a bunch of files on the side and this is built with the Meteor Kitchen. Um, I've modified it a little bit to put myself, um, this is the, the source file and then that's, I'm writing markdown here and then that's stuff that will appear. So you can do that sort of side by side like you can in Ghost or Showdown. Um, and in fact, as you see, I'm working on a, a grammar for him to make this sort of human to machine a little bit better. And then, um, what's next? He's still actively developing it. Um, I think he works part time on his accounting stuff and part time on this, and then all night as well sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's planning to open source it at some stage. It needs a little bit of refactoring before it's ready for that. Um, he's going to build some more plugins and just improve the capabilities of it and improve the, uh, the parser and I'll help him with that. Um, I think it's quite an exciting project. It, 
you know, fits in well with Meteor and, you know, it's in the right direction of just improving the capability and the technology. Very good. Any questions? Any um, option to choose the output dialects like CopyScript or Reds or SAS or anything um, like that where you use the straight JS and see if there's coming out? There isn't at the moment, but um, I mean it probably could because it, it runs the Markdown um, compiler in there, so it probably could. Mm -hmm. I think it might have the less option already in. I haven't explored that. So you might be able to do it. I'm not sure about the copy script, but yeah. I mean, that's basically just uh, a command line, isn't it, to, to run the copy script over. It, it is and it isn't. I like the <coughs> stuff when you try and convert directly to copy script. It's not so successful because the converters don't have the context of the outer code. Yeah. So that doesn't right. always succeed that way. Yeah. Oh, so you want to generate copy script rather than start a copy script and. Well. If you start, if your templates are in JavaScript and you skew them straight through a CopyScript converter, you might get some sort of a result, but it yeah. probably wouldn't be great. Yeah. Whereas if your original source template that you're using to generate were copy to begin with, then perhaps. Yeah. Yep. I think you hinted at it before. Is the idea using this tool that you edit the generated file rather than edit the generated source? Is there any updates that you would make? Well, I guess that's your choice, whether you give yourself a framework and then you say, right, I'm done with the generator, I'll then build my app from here, which you could do. Or you could say, well, I'm going to keep with that because I can see some benefits in if there's plugins that come later, then maybe you could stay with that. So you, you put all of your source code as separate files that are basically just compiled in. Yeah, that's quite I, I, I have a question. Yeah, but if you put your code as separate files, you can have a generate. It, it creates the base files taken from the from the spec, right? yeah, yeah. But it doesn't touch yours, so you can you can sort of uh, extend it or customize it up there. Yeah, so yeah. And without you, losing the capability to go back and and regenerate. Yeah, them. If, if you do, if you overwrite them, yeah, if you edit them and overwrite them. I mean, you could set up Grunt to basically run the Meteor kitchen over it, so it would Grunt and then Meteor would all be. So you just edit from your source files and it would pass all the way through. Uh, just a comment, I've, I've used it, um, yeah. and I, I, um, I found I was really excited about it actually, which yeah. is quite amazing. Um, so at first I was working with the JSON, and after a while that just became... It's a headache, actually. isn't it? Yeah. So, but then I discovered, yeah, the, the jury, and the jury was really great. However, once it got to, to be a bit of a complex app, I kind of couldn't understand how it worked, but yeah. you, you kind of get down this kind of rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah. But I think that, I think it's actually a fantastic um, generator, mm -hmm. and, uh, or, or, you know, developing environment, and I think that the Planning for Open Source Card would really... Help it. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great tool, but it needs it needs it needs some work. Needs some, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's not perfect, but yeah, yeah. But it's uh, really amazing. Actually, it's a good concept, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 Anyone else? What are your top three features for for it? Well, improving the human to machine is a, a big thing, I think, just because it allows you to write code quickly rather than, you know, editing JSON or YAML is sort of tedious. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing. The Currently it just shows rows in a table, like it, it just grows, so if you've got a thousand then it blows up, so we just need to put a, a grid of some kind in there to paginate that, that would be a, a good step forward. Um, and have a lot of smarter things like, you know, look at the string that you're using and say if it's got the word date in it, it's probably a date, so I'll also type it, you know, just all that sort of preemptive stuff could make it easier. Yeah. I found the help that was there was actually really good, but then yeah. there was big, this, big, big gaps and it was really yeah. hard to work out what was going on. Yeah. And, and, and even looking at the sample code. Yeah. But I really think it's an amazing uh, lot of potential. Mate, yeah, and he's, he's done a lot of work on it. You can tell it's quite, quite a lot of effort in there. Yeah. And I'm sure he'd be happy if you wanted to contribute those gaps where you, sure, sure. <laughs> you know the help, if you can work it out. Yeah. Does it generate any test? Um, I don't think it does. Um, that's something that would probably be useful. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if that's it, I guess we're done for the night. Thank you.